Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is our episode about time travel. Yeah, that's right. We're going there again and again and back and then forward again. It's going to be awesome. Make sure you subscribe for all the episodes in this series. There are actually going to be four this week. It's going to be super great. You can also check us out on SoundCloud and iTunes if you prefer, you know, one episode that you can listen to while you commute or something. So this week, we're going to talk about when we started becoming obsessed with time travel. We're going to talk about the history of that. It's going to be great. We're also going to talk about what exactly is time. That one's going to be fun. That was tough. We almost killed producer Blair on this one. We're also going to talk about whether time travel is possible, what consequences there would be if one were to time travel, and if someone already has time traveled. It's going to be really cool. I'm super excited about this one. So let's kick into it. Why are we obsessed with time travel was kind of a big question that we wanted to start with, right? Back to the Future, Time Cop, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Looper, Groundhog Day, Terminator, Time Bandits, Hot Tub Time Machine, Somewhere in Time, Star Trek, a whole bunch of times, Army of Darkness, Planet of the Apes, even Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, time travel. It is all over. Pop culture and literature, humans love it. We love it. I mean, getting to go back or forward in time, seeing what the future looks like and what the Earth is going to be and going back in time and fixing mistakes, that's obviously great, right? But where did this come from? Who was the first human to look at the world and see it as a little boat on a river and not as like, you know, the firmament? Time travel as a concept, and, and when that came out, that's pretty hard to nail down. We found a few mentions in ancient mythology from all over the world about time travel. Uh, one of the early mentions that pops up a lot that has, seems to have been difficult to confirm is a guy named Mahabharata in Hindu mythology. I probably pronounced that wrong. Let me know if I did. Uh, who traveled to heaven or an underwater kingdom or something, and then they fell asleep or something. Anyway, they return and find out they're in the future. This was written in about 700 BCE, 300 CE. But that's not the only example ever. That's just one of the earliest examples, a notable early example. Mostly, people travel into the future in these mythological examples, and it was just a more common story. However, traveling back in time is a relatively new concept. And people got really excited about it once they heard about it, right? Whenever the first person thought it up, it kind of caught on. Again, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what was the very first story ever written about time travel going back, but there was a book by what many refer to as the first true science fiction author, Alexander Weltman, or Weltman, it's with a V, and it was published in Russia in 1836. And the premise of this was that the narrator hopped on a hippogriff, sounds familiar, and rode to ancient Greece, has a little chat with his homeboy Aristotle, and then goes on a little outing with his buddy Alexander the Great, Sounds like a kind of awesome fiction story. And the concept is that he had to go back in time to do that. Aristotle would not have been alive in 1836, right? So he had to go back in time to meet them. But they didn't really talk about that. It's not really how it works. So it's a rudimentary concept, but it is time travel. You could make that argument. Another one is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This also introduced the idea of time travel. You, if you're somehow lived in the world of the West and are unfamiliar with A Christmas Carol, you've got Scrooge and three ghosts, the past ghost, the present ghost, and the future ghost. And Scrooge gets to explore the choices he made in those three different places. And he goes back in time to reassess mistakes that he's made in order to fix them. It was originally published in 1843. And it's not really time travel by our definition because it was more of visions and that's how they looked at it in the book and the narrative, but it was a time travel adventure, right? He was reliving the past. Maybe the first story ever published about time traveling both backward and to a different era belongs to Mark Twain and his book, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. That was originally published in 1889 which is 100 years before producer Blair was born, by the way. 104 years before intern Denisha was born. Some less number for me. It was pretty crazy. That was just a sidebar. Don't worry about it. It's kind of an interesting book about a guy who gets knocked in the head with a crowbar, and it transports him back to the year 528. So there's not a lot of science there, and it could, again, just be kind of a vision, and he's not traveling by choice. It's not quite the same as what we want, right? This is all pre-science fiction. When we think of time travel today, we think of a concerted and or decided effort or the person, you know, the, the protagonist did something that took them back in time. A human jumps in a machine and goes somewhere, right? Falls into a hole, 
appears somewhere else. That kind of time travel came out only a few years after A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. The very famous book considered the first time that that happened H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. In fact, it's so iconic that when we think of a time-traveling device, we just call it a time machine. <laughs> like, that's how iconic this book was. So Mr. Wells gave us the first glimpse into this person traveling through time on purpose. If you haven't read the book, highly recommend it. It's a great book, quick read, pretty short. But the time traveler goes into the future on the time machine. There's hundreds of thousands of years, loses the time machine. And I'm not going to spoil too much, you know, Morlocks Gardens. It's pretty awesome. Read it. But these fantastical ideas were gaining popularity. I mean, I don't know if you were taking notes here, but we've got the Russian guy in the mid-1800s. Then we've got, you know, later 1800s with the Mark Twain book and with the H.G. Wells book. And because of those things, it seems like it's gaining popularity. And the Victorian period might have something to do with that, right? In the late 1800s, we had Jules Verne going to the bottom of the sea, to the center of the earth. We had, uh, in 1902, George Millier and the Voyage to the Moon, right? The movie where they shot a giant gun at the moon. Science fiction was in its infancy, but we were dreaming about stuff, and we were using science to help explain our dreams. But another question we had when we started doing this research was, why did it take so long? Why did it take so long for us to start thinking about this? I mean, if it's true that science fiction was the first time we started really thinking about the river of time and going back and forth up and down it, I mean, that's only like 100, 150 years old. Maybe it just took humans a long time to think of the distant future as a thing that you could go to, a place you could travel, like going across the country. You know, it took us a long time to figure out that you could go so far, most likely you know, the future wouldn't be that different because everything you'd heard about in the past generation was so similar to the present, so maybe the future didn't seem like a place you would want to go. Or maybe we just didn't have the energy. You know, we were just trying to survive. We didn't have the time to sit around and think about all the fancies of the future. Now we have a lot more free time. Maybe people just hadn't really started to question time, right? Maybe time was a thing that wasn't up for grabs, up for kind of questioning, up for analysis. It just kind of moved. But as science started to become a thing, and you had gentlemen scientists, like rich people who were able to spend their days thinking about this stuff, uh, kind of like scientist philosophers, gentlemen and gentlewomen also, the time travel bug caught on. And of course, we never really let it go, because now there are shows and books and stuff everywhere. There's a book called The End of Eternity by Isaac Asimov that came out in 1955 about powerful time travelers from the future who distort the human timeline. There's, of course, books from the 90s, the Star Trek Voyager book series. Don't worry about it. I read them all when I was a kid. There are a whole bunch of other crazy science fiction novels and, of course, movies like Back to the Future. But why are we so obsessed with it? Like, think about it. What is so intriguing about time travel? You can tell us. You can find us on Twitter, at DNews and hashtag DNews Plus. I'm at Trace Dominguez. I like to talk about it. But every major cable station, NBC, ABC, and Fox, all have shows that have some sort of version of time travel. And maybe it's because we love looking back at our lives and saying, I would change that. I wish I could change this. And, you know, talk to your friends that you don't see anymore, or loved ones who are gone now. And, you know, all that stuff is great. It makes people feel like they have some control over this crazy world we live in. But the main reason we see protagonists go back in time is to fix a mistake, and that never seems to work out the way that they think, right? It usually creates more problems than it solves. So maybe the whole reason we like this storyline is because it is a fictional way to appreciate the here and now and not worry about our decisions so much because changing them might only lead to bad things. Kind of fun to think about. But would this actually happen someday? You know, are we going to get to time travel? You'll have to come back tomorrow because we're going to talk more about what time even is. Make sure you let us know down in the comments if you would want to time travel and where you would want to go. And make sure you subscribe so you get more D News Plus every day. Hey, before we go, sidebar. We have an email address. Time travel party at mailinator.com. If you are a time traveler and you want to reach out to us and talk about time travel, email us. Time travel party at mailinator.com. I want to know. Okay, bye.